Germany. Did you make any kind of pact with the devil? Uh, no. Eh? To play no, like this? Something like that. Never. No, no, just never. practice. Just practice. Hard practice. Amazing. How old are you, John? 44, as of a couple of weeks ago. 44? You look much younger. Oh, I think I'm going to shave my head, too. <laughs> I've got and some clippers back there if you want. I'm sorry? I've got some of those clippers back there if you'd like. You know, okay. <laughs> you can do it on live television. Why not? Tell me something, Joe. Uh, was guitar your first instrument? No, I started playing drums when I was nine years old. I wanted to be like uh, Ringo Starr, you know, make a lot of racket in the house. Nine years old, then yeah. probably a neighbor gave you a guitar uh, no, in order to, to take yeah. away the drums. Yeah, I was actually one of my, uh, my oldest sister uh, decided to, uh, to get things quieter in the house. She, yeah, sure. She <laughs> donated her first paycheck from her uh, uh, job as an art teacher to, uh, to get me going you? with a guitar. But but uh, unplugged or plugged? No, it was, it was an electric, uh, electric Swedish already. guitar. I think it was called a, a Hagstrom 3. Yeah. And then how old were you, well, were you then when you started 14. playing the guitar? Yeah, Jimi Hendrix died and I was <laughs> devastated and I had to <coughs> take up the guitar. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how uh, a lot of people, a lot of great artists died because of heavy drugs, right? That's right. Yeah, it's terrible, yeah. Chet Baker. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, yeah. Janis Joplin. Charlie Parker, yeah, you know. Charlie Parker, it's yeah. terrible. Uh, is it your first time in Brazil? No, second. Second, second time. time, yeah. But you've been already to Curitiba and Porto Alegre, all those towns? Or uh, Porto Alegre, we've never been there. No. no we, did, uh, we did Rio, we did here in Sao Paulo, and uh, Curitiba, I think the last time we were Curitiba. here. Curitiba. Where do you live in the States? Uh, San Francisco. In San Francisco? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But is, you have many special features in this guitar, or is it just as a, a normal? Well, the, the the most unusual feature is that it's uh, it's chromed. Yeah, this is, this yeah, is amazing. It's yeah. a wood guitar, so I mean it, it resonates mm -hmm. like a wood guitar, but it's covered with, with uh, chrome. chrome paint. This is a early prototype from 1990, so it's got a lot of imperfections uh, beautiful. before you know, they my, figured my, out. My guitar man. Oh yeah, he was. Look at those glasses. Yeah, you know? he's, try he's trying to emulate you. I think. <laughs> but he was uh, drilling when he saw your instrument. No, he's, he's of envy. He's quite good. But he's good. He's quite good. He's yeah, good. we had a little thing going backstage here. You which did some licks. Yeah. You did. Mm -hmm. Tomate, você foi lá, tá na canjinha com ele. Yeah.
Yeah. He's been a great uh, inspiration, you know, in my career, in my music. You know, he that. says that to yeah. every guy who sits uh, here, yeah. <laughs> even if <laughs> even if he doesn't play any instrument, he says that. <laughs> Terrible boy. Uh, this is this is the album that that is out, it's out in Brazil already. This one. I think it probably just came out here. Yeah. Engines of Creation. Okay, let me show it here. Ok, let me button my shirt. Eu botou a minha camisa aqui que estava desabotando sozinha, de nervoso. Ok, tá aqui. Devil's Devil Slide. You see, you have something with the devil here. <laughs> That's actually uh, a really treacherous snowboarding run uh -huh. up in the Sierra Mountains in the in the state of Nevada. Oh yeah. But, uh, the devil's Devil Slide. Devil Slide. I lost control on it and I wrote a song about it. So. You lost control? What? Well, yeah, it was just what, you were driving or, or no no snowboarding snowboarding yes yeah and uh, it's just, it was just too steep you know but it was great fun yeah, it was a, it was a, until you lost until you lost that was fun too I guess yeah you just keep rolling you know until didn't you break stop. anything no no not at all you surf too no you know why the salt water uh, depletes my calluses so oh. I prefer the 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 snow the sports snow. yeah too much you see. Yeah. No he, more surfing. He surfs, I know that. Yeah, yeah no well, more surfing. Well, with snowboarding, you can break your arms also. Uh, no, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I just saw. Uh, was TV Vai your student? Yes, he was, yeah. Yeah? We grew up in the same town, mm -hmm. a little place called Car Place on Long Island, which is right next to Manhattan Island in New York. And uh, I guess he was about... 12 years old, he came to my house with uh, a guitar with no strings on it and a pack of strings, and he said, can you teach me how to play guitar? Mm -hmm. I'd been playing for about a year or so, a year and a half, and uh, uh, I said, why not? And he turned out to be a fabulous student Fantastic. and a good friend, yeah. and uh, we still, we play together, we tour together. First you had to put the strings on his guitar. Yeah, I, I had him do that, of before, course. Before teaching how to play. Yeah, but you know, he, he was an accomplished accordion player, Oh, he was at 12 years old, a, but, yeah. a musician already. It's amazing because uh, when, I, uh, when I see, when I look at you, and I see Steve Vai's study with him, you look like 23, 25. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, it must, must be the water on Long Island or something. Yeah, or the, the snowboarding. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you are known for, exactly for the manipulation of your guitar, mm -hmm. right? And always pursuing new sounds. Uh, this album, for instance, is it the result of uh, some special research? Well, certainly uh, that album represents a fusion of, on, on the one side, electronica, trip-hop, uh, rave, ambient, uh, any kind of music on that side of the, the, the musical spectrum, and what I do, rock instrumental music. And I borrow from jazz and fusion and classical, but I, yeah. I wanted to get the, the two of us to meet square in the middle and have a whole record completely dedicated to the, the new music of this millennium. And uh, how many musicians with you here? Uh, boy, 98% of the record is just myself and uh, a French guitarist named Eric Codia, mm -hmm. who works out of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And uh, on one song, we had uh, a guest uh, from the, the David Letterman band come in and, and uh, oh, yeah? play drums. And uh, we, Kevin Shirley was our producer, and Anton Fig was the drummer for that one song, and a guitar player, uh, Pat Thrall, which people may know from some heavy rock from the, the uh, 70s, but he wound up playing bass on that song. And tell me something, Joe, what do you listen when you're alone, at home? What kind of music do you like to listen? Everything. Uh, I just, I try to match my mood. I might put on uh, some classical music, uh, not that much though. I think I still spend a lot of time listening to uh, rare uh, Hendrix recordings. I listen to a lot of old blues, Mississippi yeah, Delta blues. I love that too. Um, I do actually like a lot of the, I guess you call it hip hop rock, Corn, uh, mm -hmm. Limp Bizkit, bands like that. And uh, if they've got guitars going in there and they're actually playing, You're there. then You're I like listening. it. Yeah. And I, I've, you know, I've got a soft spot for the, the, the really innovative players uh, like Alan Holsworth or John McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got a new CD from the Tomato Man over there too. I can't wait to hear that. Tomato. Yeah. Uh, how did you sell your first album? Uh, wow. I had a, uh, a 1966 Corvair. Was it 63 or 66? 
a vehicle that should be, you know, banned. In a museum. And, you know, yeah, um, yeah, you know, the engine in the back and the, yeah. and, and the steering column that comes right through yeah, your, no, your no, chest no. in an accident. But I had all the seats ripped out so I could fit my amplifier and my guitar in there <laughs> if I ever did get a gig. I was pretty broke, but I, I started my own record company, my own publishing company, which really was just a formality at, uh, at the local courthouse. And I sold these records. Uh, they were, it was an EP on a 12-inch. I don't know if anyone uses them here anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just sold them out of the trunk of the car. I had a big trunk in that car, you know, so... And I just and drove you stopped around. in the middle of the seat. Uh, who wants records from Joe Satriani? No, okay, come on. Who wants? I didn't go that far. I actually, I just went to different record stores and, and uh, <laughs> just if they wouldn't start an account, the manager. I yeah. just give it to them. <laughs> I mailed quite. I'd say I mailed a hundred of them around the world. I got a list of independent mm -hmm. record stores around the world, and I wrote them a note uh -huh. saying, you know, sell it, copy it, do whatever you want. And this is before the internet, so it would have been easier sure. just yeah. to. But tell me something. Uh, you have you have a very nice voice, a beautiful voice, and you don't sing much. No, no. But no. thanks for the compliment. But no, really, uh, really. But yeah, I've, you know, my range is quite small. I don't really have that big of a range, and it, for years it was difficult to play and sing at the same time as well. Yeah. Uh, but the hardest thing I think is writing really great lyrics. I think that's that's the, that's the, a job for yeah. someone who's good at it. I think. Okay. That's what stops me. You know. Can uh, can we listen a little more of your guitar? Oh, sure, yeah. Vamos a ouvir mais Joe Satriani, ok? I'll play a slow blues, alright, just to get us out. Fantastic. Uh...